Hello everyone. Welcome to Mayur Programming Club. Today we will be solving another daily lead code problem and the problem's name is Spiral Matrix Part 3. So the problem statement goes like this. You will be given a start cell uh, in the matrix in which you will be starting and uh, you will be facing east uh, while you will be starting. Okay? and the northwest corner of the it will be the first row and the first column and the southwest southeast uh, corner will be the last uh, row and last column okay in the matrix so the matrix will be looking something like this okay so the as you can see here the first row and first column will be this okay and the first the last row and last column as uh, it is said that it will be last uh, towards southeast direction okay so uh, this will be the position of your matrix and initially you will be facing east in this direction okay so then you have to walk in clockwise spiral shape to visit every possible position in this grid okay so whenever you move outside the grid boundary we continue uh, to walk outside the grid boundary but may return to the grid boundary later so let's try to understand what does the problem statement mean by this clockwise spiral shape and what does it uh, mean by going outside the boundary and then coming inside okay so this is one of the examples that is given to us you can see here uh, the clockwise direction will be this direction okay so initially you are facing east so you will be going first towards the right as you can see here let's change the color here so as you can see here first you are going towards right then you are going towards uh, downward direction and then you are going towards left direction okay so in this way you will continue and this will be the uh, this will be the directions in which you will be going first right then down then left then up okay then up okay and you will repeat this okay so this is what the problem statement is meaning by clockwise spiral shape and for going outside the grid boundaries and then coming inside you can see these yellow dots you uh, just went outside the grid in this particular step and uh, remained outside the grid and then you entered the grid at this particular point okay so you can see uh, what does it mean by you know uh, going outside the grid boundaries and then coming inside the grid okay so and you will keep continuing your path of this spiral traversal okay so this is the spiral traversal okay So I hope uh, till now everything is clear to you what the problem statement is saying and uh, whenever you move outside the grid okay it, it, is, it is done then eventually we will reach all the rows and calls uh, so all the cells will be reached eventually by this process and you will stop at that point okay and return the array coordinates representing the positions of the grid or the cells of the grid uh, in the order you visited them okay and you will be starting at the cell this particular cell uh, which is represented by row start and uh, column start coordinates okay so these two will be given to you and uh, then you have to and, and you will also be given the row number uh, rows and columns total rows and total columns in the matrix okay and then you have to tell the order of the cells order in which you will be visiting the cells starting from this cell and facing the east direction okay so that's why this uh, whole order came first since you are facing east direction so the very first move will be towards right as uh, it was happening and then down and then you will be moving left and then up and then you will repeat okay 
and what is the repetition process here the repetition process is that you will go there will be certain limits okay uh, in uh, to which you can go in a particular direction okay so for example let's say the initial position that you were starting was one uh, on the row side and four on the column side so let's say you were starting here okay in this particular direction you were starting so uh in this particular block so uh you will be setting limits okay so initially your left and right limits will be set to the column your start column and uh, your initial up and down limits will be set, uh, set to your rows okay so let's change the color here just for the sake of clarity so this will be your rows initial rows or start rows you can say okay so once you have set these limits then what you will be doing is you will be moving in a spiral shape following this order and re uh, repeating it every uh, step okay so then uh, this thing will continue and you will also increase your limits okay and uh, the limits uh, till which you will go in every direction will be till you pass the limit by one unit okay so for example initially every limit was set to this particular cell only okay then you went in this particular direction uh, towards right and you went just past uh, one unit past the limit okay so okay uh, so this will uh, happen in every direction and then you will also increase your limit of this side okay so your right limit will be now shifted by one okay so i will show you how limits are pushed uh, beyond uh, uh, their current values uh, while we are moving in a particular direction okay and uh, now let without further delay let's quickly uh, dive into the implementation part uh, there things will be more clear to you okay how we have uh, implemented this approach basically once you know uh, these things uh, these couple of observations that uh, which uh, way you will be following which directions you will be following and how you will be repeating them and how you will be starting after making these uh, uh, couple of observations then uh, the problem boils down to just implementing your observations okay so let's dive into the implementation part and before doing that uh, let's have a quick look at the constraints also okay so according to the constraints the number of rows and the number of columns will be of order 100 and the rows will be starting from uh, 0 and going up till the row numbers so it is a zero based indexing in a way you can say that okay so then let's and it uh, the matrix will never be empty row and col columns uh, will always be at least one so these are the constraints so let's quickly dive into the implementation part and let's take the code to the board and let's take a fresh slide for that be with me the code is a little bit lengthy it seems lengthy but it is not so we will be ex uh, discussing this in detail okay so let's get rid of this toolbar so let's see what is happening inside the code okay i think now it should be visible enough for you so let's discuss one by one so first of all you will be wanting to initialize some variables and the limits that we were talking about okay so first of all the total number of cells will be number of rows into number of columns okay and then you will be setting up your left right and up down limits okay as i already uh, told you that up and down will be having initial row uh, row or start row value and uh, left and right will be having uh start column values okay so this is what is happening here also so left and right limits as i told you will be having column start values 
and uh, right and up limits will be having row start values okay so initially you are constrained you are constrained uh, you have constricted yourself into a uh, the cell which you are starting okay your limits are also only up to that cell okay and at each step you will be going one unit ahead your of your limit and then you will be pushing your limit okay so the directions that we talk about that we will be moving is right down left and up okay rdl u okay and uh, you will continue in every direction till you surpass the limit in this in that direction okay so then you will also be initializing uh answers array you can say in a way the visited order that will be used to return as this function spiral matrix part 3 okay and it will be of size 2 because you will be having two coordinates inside every uh, entry okay and then this visited index will be used to keep track of the entries that you are currently inserting in this matrix and it will also tell you whether you have uh, visited all cells or not okay so once this visited index happens to be equal to total number of cells then you will say that okay we are done here we can stop uh, the iteration and uh, we have already visited all the cells and the, the visited order will be having the correct order of the cells in which we visited them okay so now uh, moving in the directions that we talked about first the right direction in the right direction as we discussed you will be shifting your column to this position okay so the current column will be increased okay so you are here let's say r and c then your c value will be increased towards right okay so this is what happening inside here and then is in grid is a function which tells you whether you are inside the grid or not okay so let's have a quick look at that also so this this is just a boundary check standard boundary check that we are doing here okay nothing new uh just uh checking that whether you are within the boundaries of the grid or not so it will return you that if you are in the grid and uh, there is some cells to be visited then you will add the current cell to the grid uh, visited order okay and you will also increment your index so the next time you will increase uh, enter the cell that you will be visiting next in a new position okay so you will be editing current row and current column the current coordinates of the cell okay then once you have done visiting right direction you will increment your right limit by one uh, unit okay and here you can see we are trying to surpass the right limit by one okay then you will increment your right limit okay and uh, it, it is a way of increasing the right limit since right limit is, was towards right direction that's why this plus plus sign okay and then according to the directions that we have decided we will be going down this time so similar thing will be happening for the down uh, direction uh, first of all you will try to go surpass uh, the down limit okay beyond the down limit and uh, if the cells that you are visiting while doing so are well within the boundaries of the grid and you have not visited all the cells then you will uh, simply be adding those cells okay uh, to the current your uh, visited orders okay and you will all okay sorry for that and you will also increment your down limit at each uh, time of uh, you uh, you are uh, doing the down traversal okay then similar way you will keep doing all the directions and uh, there is a thing that is to be noted is while we are moving in left and up directions we are actually uh, going uh, in the up direction so we want to reach higher in the up upward direction so that's why we have to decrement the uh, left and right limits okay so while you are going to left so you want to go more towards left that's why this minus one okay and left limit will be decremented actually because left is towards 
uh, negative side so we are considering the number line to be like this so this is positive this is negative and this is negative and this is positive okay so it is being considered like this okay so while you are going towards the uh, down direction you were adding and you, while you were going towards the right direction also again you were adding but as when you are going towards the left and up direction this is left and this is up you are subtracting okay so this is a way of you can say in, uh, increasing our limits okay so the logic is pretty much same for every direction and once uh, all the cells are visited this whole while loop will terminate and you will be having the correct order in which uh, you have visited the cells okay and in the spiral direction so then you will be simply returning that visited order okay and uh, if we talk about the complexities here time complexity wise it is order of number of rows into columns okay and if you are considering the extra space that we have used for the answer then again uh, it will be of order rows into calls into two okay or you can say total cells into two okay but if you are not considering this the structure that you have used to store your answer then space complexity is constant okay not considering this visited order okay it's totally up to you whether you want to consider it or not if you are considering it then total cell into two otherwise it's constant so these are the complexities and uh, time and space and if you are still having any kind of doubts or any queries in general then you may ask them in the comment section and i really hope this solution walkthrough added some value to your journey of honing your dss skills and until next time keep solving more and more problems and i will see you in the next video thank you for watching